What's up, brothers? It's been way too long since I put a film out. You guys are gonna get it though. I know I haven't been working on the Cobalt and we're still not on it today. Cause uh, the Subaru, I've just been engulfed in the Subaru and I really wanna work on this thing. Well, not only that, we took it to the track the other day. I really forgot to bring my camera for the track day up at Pocono Raceway. I should've brought you guys. Good time though. And uh, after the first session, there was three sessions. That first session I was blowing smoke out of the turbo. Well out of the exhaust. I don't know if it's the head gaskets or the turbo. That's what we're going to get into today. We're going to do a little diag and see what it is, whether it's the turbo leaking internally or whether it's the head gaskets that's going bad. Trans. Or if it's the trans because it was blowing the dipstick out of the trans and going everywhere too and making it cause a bunch of smoke. But uh, just judging by this, oh my God. it's definitely something internal one way or another. So I already got the exhaust off because I was looking at the back side of the turbo to see if we had any oil that was visual is right behind the exhaust in the exhaust housing. But I don't see anything there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick a bore scope down in the bypass, which uh, I'm gonna have to show you from underneath. So there's the back of the turbo. Now it is a little wet just because I'd started it and the condensation is really humid out today. So I expect to see that from the heat, the heat difference. So now I got that bypass open, I got it disconnected from the valve. Dude, one thing though I forgot to mention guys, is this bypass, in order to take that off, it's got this little clip, this little clip here, that goes around the shaft here. And basically just use a little short screwdriver to pry it off. You just gotta make sure you're holding on to it too, so when you pry it off you see that little seat that it sits in. So that when you pry it off it doesn't fly out, because it's very small, you know you're gonna lose it. and then just pops off like that, and that's how I open the bypass there. That's actually opening the bypass, which you can barely see everywhere, but you see that little, see the flappy. So anyway, so now I'm gonna stick the bore scope in there and look internally to see if we find anything good as this guy is chuckling away. Yo, so we got this bore scope from Amazon. It was like 20 bucks, super cheap. The, the lens came off it though, so the quality kind of sucks, as you can see. Oh, dude, look at the cheesy. Oh, my, I got red eyes, dude. Look at it. <laughs> Put it in there. But anyway, so we're going to fish our way into this boar. Oh, jeez. The only thing I would change is if I could actually direct it. It's kind of hard to direct the camera anywhere. All right, well, that's not giving us anything. So I guess at this point we're gonna go to take the intake, the intake pipe off of it to look at the compressor housing and see if there's anything going on there. Let's see if you can get in there and see this disrespect. There's a turbo here, but look at it. Right there, you got look it. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, Capital One, I wanna pay that bill. That intake, the clamp the is like the, the way they're stuffed fucking, into the TTV yeah. valve. Jesus, who does that? I don't even know how they got it on there unless they put it all together before they put it this on the not, car. Yeah, shit. that's it not knows. common courtesy to yeah. act in <laughs> such a way. So dry. Look at the dry rubber hose. God forbid I tool them off and drop stuff. Oh, it's it's like this is not flexible at all. It's a mm. yeah, dude. Yeah, look at this There's one. Nothing worse than this one's nice. Oh well, that that happened at the track. That thing ripped in half, so we had to tape it up. As somebody already did. Twice before. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is pull the intercooler off just to make everything a little bit more accessible. Uh, my luck with this car, it was never mounted, so it's already really loose on there. Got to take the bypass or the blow off valve off. I took, I loosened up the the charge pipe here off the turbo. I got to get it off. Maybe I'm hoping to be able to just kind of slip it off and out. And I got this loose here, and we are ready to pull this bad boy off. It's probably just like the rest of the plastic on this thing. It's just dried up and doesn't want to flex. Oh. oh, there we go. Oh, well maybe that's our problem, guys. Look at that. Oil just dripping. Oh my God, <laughs> dude. That's obnoxious. I'd say that's where... Uh, oh, yeah, it smells just like it. My God, look at inside of this thing. It's covered in oil. Oh, whoa, there comes all the oil. All right, well... Uh, we're going in the right direction, I'll tell you that much. Dude, look at it. It's just oh pulling in the throttle body. God. Here, go ahead. Gotta go in here. 
Look at all that. Yeah, oil. this is disgusting. And uh, one thing I didn't tell, we were looking at this the other day, and we were just watching the turbo run for a little while and actually get hot and whatnot to see if there was any kind of signs of something. And I was putting my finger on one of the PCV valves on this side because the hose is actually open. When it was running, I'm revving it up and actually had my finger on it. You can feel the vacuum on it. So it's not, not in a high stress scenario with the engine as far as like a lot of load, but it still had vacuum on it and it's still blowing smoke anyway. So I really don't believe that it's head gasket related just because it's not having a bunch of blow by or anything like that. So, or the fact that it's not getting sucked through the PCV system, or maybe it is, I don't know. But uh, point being, there's a lot of oil on this intake. Cassie's corner, what's going on? Dude, my RSX as, as usual is reliable as shit. As always. Yeah, so tell, uh, tell there was no concerns. Tell us something we don't fucking know. No concerns know. on my end. Aaron in the Del Sol, he ruined his rack. He's got no return on his steering anymore. Sloppy mess. So I'm, I made it out alive. So um, this isn't yeah, really yeah, my yeah, issue. So I don't know why I'm even actually here. I'm going to go, actually. Yeah. I'm going to go home. He's quitting, actually. He's done. It's Jake's last day. Farewell, Jake. Let's look together, guys. No, not at the turbo, at the screen, because this is where we're. Why don't you just, can you record this and use it in picture in picture? Oh, I guess I could. Editing I wish are my, or not, but. I wish my camera was a little better quality. Yeah, make sure you guys are playing, paying close attention to this video. Yeah, you see how clear this is? Look at the compressor housing as we see it. Oh, I gotta go down the snail trail. Oh my, that looks like a lot of oil. What, you can't, what? <laughs> you can't see anything. <laughs> Talk to us about turbo leaks. They suck. You don't want them. At this point, we're gonna pull this turbo off. Luckily, we got another Subaru outside with another turbo that's not in as good a shape because uh, the shaft play on this one's way less than the other one on that one, but Whatever, that one's a little bit bigger. It's got a bigger exhaust housing so we can make more boost, but I really don't want to do that because I want to reserve this engine. But for now, at least we got another turbo we can use. So, let's pull it off, guys. Turbos, you know, there's quite a bit of stuff you got to pull off for this. Already got the intercooler off, so we don't got to worry about that. You got bolts around on the, uh, in the header, no, here, bad. there, and then one right in front of the turbo, or right at the back side here. Then, uh, you know, all the boost lines, the water line. Uh, we'll show you as I go. So I got the line so far for a boost reference off of here and the snout of the super, uh, supercharger. <laughs> I got stuck on the Kobo video. Uh, but yeah, the boost reference lines that go to the boost controller over here on the side. Took those off. Now I'm taking this coolant line off the top here. And she's leaking. We got something catching it underneath. I gotta take this oil line off here. Guys, we got that bracket off. What so what I'm working on right now is getting the oil feed line off. It's got this little bolt, this little 10 millimeter here on the side, on the compressor housing that's holding it on there. And I need to get the feed off the block, or at least loosen it so I can pivot this off the turbo so I can pull it off. But it is right, you can see this cover, this, that's got this heat shield on this water line and the feed is literally right under it. And the header's in the way to get a socket on it, and an open-ended wrench is getting covered by this guy too. So it's really tough. I think I'm gonna have to pull this water line off first in order to get in there. It's a 17, by the way. All right, so the water line on this side has to come off. There, it's pretty cool. Got that light from you. <laughs> really cool. I just about ripped it in half. It's really cool. Because these are both one and the same. I, it wouldn't have been a big deal if I did, just because this band does hold them together. But they're both a 17, they're right on top of each other. And the water line that runs under the turbo is the same line that's messing us up, or that we're stuck, that was in our way, sorry, for the oil line. Now Jake's got some clearance now that I broke this loose. And he's gonna break that oil line loose so that we can move that. All right, so after looking at this, a little closer. It's really hard to see. I'm gonna try and get a good shot of it for you guys. But the oil line, the return line, is that little 10 millimeter back behind the transmission, that plate there. 
and it runs down and goes into that that soft line back there which is even harder to see either way point being it runs all behind everything and being able to get that and actually break it loose is uh, quite a feat in itself so what I'm going to do is actually break the turbo loose since it is a soft line I should be able to move it once I get the turbo loose off the exhaust and try to release it once I do that so I'm going to try and break these loose again I did already and they're pretty tight but I didn't get real into it so we're going to squirt it up with some banana juice and then we are going to try and yeah, hit it with a hammer break it loose before we get the torch out all right, so here's how you break an exhaust bolt. Not loose, just break it. You just break it. Just go on there, get crazy. Just give myself the best bet here. But I'm going gentle so I don't just snap something. Motherfucker's on there though. Goo! Oh, I was really flexing that bad boy. Let me try this other one. I did get this other one to make some noise. So maybe this one will be nice to us. Yeah. Oh, might have broke something. Nah, that sounded good. Oh yeah, I did break it loose. Hell yeah, brother. See ya. I just needed a little. Yeah, luckily this turbo wasn't put on. It seems like some of the hardware was pretty new on this thing. So it's not too nasty. There's one. Oh shit. Oh. oh yeah. God damn! That one's on there. Well at least I got the one that I was really worried about trying to heat. It was near so much stuff. Yeah. Look at that, another successful break. Yeah. Wow. Hurts my ears. But I got him. No. The turbo's loose. Loose as a goose, people. Now, once again, I don't know how far I'm going to get just because of the fact that that oil line's still on the bottom. But we do have it loose everywhere else. But now it makes it a lot easier to get to those bolts. Um, oh jeez. That was actually a lot easier than I thought. Which is nice, because then uh, we'll actually be able to just put the oil line back on before we even put it on. Oh, oh you know why it was so easy? Because the oil line didn't have a clamp on the bottom. It just came right off. Wow. <laughs> Well, you know why they didn't put Real fancy, guys. You know, the more I take this thing apart, the more I work on it, the more I find some... <laughs> Stupid shit, I'll tell you. Alright, guys. I think I'm honestly just kidding myself. I think I actually am having an issue with the engine. The turbo got pulled off. I don't visually see anything wrong with it. I mean, I can pull it apart and see what's going on. But and the other thing that I saw before, but I was kind of just, you know, didn't want to pay attention to it, is the the line or the fitting that it accepts the PCV system. You can see how much oil's in that. It's quite a bit of oil in there. Yeah, and just because of the fact that it's before the turbo, before the uh, the blow off valve, a good amount of oil coming from there. I'm really kind of not thinking it's the turbo. I mean, I could. The only way I really could tell about taking this turbo apart and seeing if the seals in it are bad, if they're ruptured by any chance and causing it. And I might just do that just to double check before I go because the only thing I can do besides pulling this engine apart is just swapping the turbos and trying that out. Another thing I was checking just to kind of rule it out as well is the PCV valve itself. I pulled that off. The best way is to just blow through it <clears throat> through one direction. You can hear it there, and then through the little nipple here. It doesn't go, there's no bypass at all. Because the valve in there is actually closing it off to go through there, because otherwise all the boost would just be going into the case. So that's working properly, so I'm not really worried about that. 
I'm just really thinking it's the engine at this point. That's the one thing I didn't want to do because I'm trying to get more work done on the Cobalt, not on this. I just wanted this as a fun daily and decided to go to a track event and now here we go blowing the damn thing up. But uh, you know, hey, I gotta do what I gotta do. So I guess the easiest thing to do is just to take the snap ring off this turbo and really just pull it apart and look internally if it's the turbo that's leaking, if any of the seals are ruptured. So all I got is a snap ring on this thing, which has the two eye holes there. Get my little snap ring tool, pull that thing off. So I got this nice snap ring tool. Uh, it's got different uh, tips on it that you can put into the, the jaws of it. And I put the 90 on it so I can get in here and show you how to pull this thing. It's pretty rusty, so I'm definitely gonna fight with it quite a bit. We'll see what we get here. Ooh. Got a part of the way out now. I'm gonna have to take this line off. Otherwise, the snap ring's not gonna come off. And there it is, that's a, the snap ring falling off. Which will be wanted anyway, so. So I just had to put it in the vise here. And then I was able to just press it, or not press it off, but pull it off. It's just a little difficult, but it did come off. You never seen inside of one of these, it's pretty cool. And that's all the housing is. It's not much. And then there's the wheel, the compressor wheel itself. And yeah, it does move around some, but overall it's pretty tight. And it's a, compared to the other ones that I've felt, it's pretty damn tight. I'm not visually seeing any leakage on this thing though. I really don't see any issues. It actually looks like it might have hit at one point. You see that one impeller peeled back a little bit. Look at it touched at one point. Either that or I just did that just now. Which I highly doubt. I didn't feel it nick it or anything. Well, I'm definitely going to be replacing the gasket on this because as you can see it chipped off pretty good and it's part of it's on there, part of it's right there, so that's not cool. But what I'm going to do <coughs> is that I'm actually going to pour oil into the top here and I'm going to cap this with a plug and let it sit in there and have it sit upside down and see if it's going to blow any oil or leak any oil around the compressor wheel. Got my handy dandy box of plugs from various things that we've bought and just kept all the plugs. So I'm just gonna find one that fits this, this uh, hole here. All right, I found one that fits in there nice and tightly. So I'm gonna turn it on its side and pour some oil on the top and see what happens. So as we see, there's nothing leaking out of it. Under, well, that's from the backside for me pouring oil all over it. There's nothing on it. The only difference is that I'm not actually, don't have oil pressure running through the thing. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna take this top plug off, pressurize it a little bit and see if it maybe leaks at that point. That's blowing the plug. Oh, there it is. Look at that boys. Blew right out. Oh, come on, focus please. Blew right out under the compressor wheel there. So we have a leaky turbo there, my friends. It started blowing out that bottom plug, but as soon as it started blowing out there, it also blew right out of the wheel there. So that's telling me that my seal on the turbo there is faulty. So what I'm gonna do is take that turbo off the silver one, throw on this thing, and that should solve my problem. Not saying that the motor's not hurt either, but I don't see why it should be, but who knows. But at least now we know that this turbo is faulty and needs to get rebuilt or replaced. Um, don't know, I'm just gonna scavenge it off the other one for now, but that is sweet. So I'll show you guys putting the other one together or I won't, I don't know, but for now, take it easy boys, and I will see you on the next one. That's how you check your turbo for a leakage.